Um, turning to Ambassador Schnepp, the situation in Ukraine um, is, is obviously been in the press. What has been the, uh, the threat to date or the effect to date within the Visegrad region and how have you responded to that threat? Well, first of all, let me thank all of you for giving us this opportunity to meet with the students of this wonderful university. It, uh, it makes me return uh, in kind of a sentimental trip back to the, those times when I've been teaching at Indiana University in Bloomington. And the students' gathering have always, uh, gatherings have always special spirit. I'll try to put the things uh, on, a, on, a, on a broader perspective. Uh, to add a couple of items on, on the Visegrad group. As my friend uh, from Hungary said, we have a, a common long lasting history. There were kings, there were uh, uh, princes, uh, a lot of a mixture of history, uh, uh, sentiments, and uh, a joint history. I mean, we've been living uh, between major powers during centuries. And uh, what united us, uh, in the recent times is exactly the, the domination of the, of the communities during more than 50 years. Uh, put us in a situation similar, although no, not equal, that four countries beginning the path toward the democracy, toward the uh, open uh, free market economy, had to take the steps that were uh, unthinkable in those years. Our leaders, uh, former President Lech Valenza, used to say uh, it's very easy to make, uh, to make from an aquarium a fish soup. Just you take a fish and you prepare your soup. But the reverse, to make an aquarium from the soup, fish soup, is impossible. This was our situation when we were beginning. We have a disastrous economy, we have uh, people that could not, on the one hand, they were accepting the freedom, uh, all the liberties, democracy, but on the other hand, they were not used to live in a free market economic country, means where the demand and, and, uh, and production decides the prices where you have your own choice to change your life, to change your profession, to move from one place to another. I, I can imagine only that it may sound odd to you because you are, you've been living your uh, few years, uh, but in a country that offered you from the very beginning the life which was full of choices. Uh, for many people in our countries, uh, to make a choice was a problem. We've been uh, depraved from the right to make our own individual choices as far as the family, as far as the uh, political option, as far even where you want to live. actually. We had problems with passport, we could not travel abroad, particularly to the Western countries. We were under the strict control of the secret police in those years. Then, in 1989, all new life began. For young people, it was relatively easy to accept a new reality. We were simply more flexi flexible with new education, uh, knowing the world, knowing languages. For the older generation, it was uh, a, a very difficult road toward the free uh, country. But we did pass this exam, and today all four countries create a success history. Uh, democratic, and, and i come back to Ukraine shortly. Well, but, but, but just stick on that for just a second. What about that fault lines question? Because it's been a dramatic change, but aren't there still, isn't there still anti-European EU sentiment within Europe, and um, there are, are different fissures and fault lines in your societies that it's not all one story? Uh, it's, it's the, the support for the European Union in our country is not equal, of course. It's natural that countries that are more successful at the moment 
uh, have more people supporting the European Union involvement. And this is the example, this is the case of Poland. We have uh, had a relatively uh, smooth path through the financial crisis in Europe. Uh, the Polish economy goes uh, well. Uh, we, we are the only country in the European Union that has never had a negative uh, GDP uh, dynamic. So we were always growing. It uh, has changed the, the, the mentality of many people. They, they discovered how many good things uh, the European Union can bring. And it's, it would be good to say that among those uh, freedoms that we enjoy in the European Union, first of all, is, is free travel. It means that you can choose your place you live and you can settle there, take your job with the full rights of a citizen in Spain, in the United Kingdom, France, or Germany. The free movement uh, rule in the European Union is fundamental for, uh, for democracy, and simply people enjoy it. They just they are moving around, they have the social security, which is on a basic level, that makes them feel comfortable and secure in case that something happens. So these conditions were very favorable for the young people, first of all. Uh, they, met, uh, they were met with, uh, with enthusiasm and the support for the European Union in Poland goes up to 68%, which is, which is if not the highest, one of the highest in the in, in, in But, but I don't place. understand why you say